G'day, I'm Gary Pye. Uh, if you've found this video, then presumably that's because you've either just bought Jack Danger or you're thinking about buying Jack Danger. So thank you very much. This video is designed to show you how to work with Jack Danger to get the most out of this character. Um, the 2D's characters can be a little bit different to some of the other characters, the standard characters I make, like the Bendies and that type of thing, in that sometimes their heads work in a little bit of a different way. And I'll show you the reason for that shortly. But what I thought I'd do is to take you through Jack, show you some of the features of the character so that you can get the most out of him, and show you how to best work with him for good results. So let's get over to Cartoon Animator, and I'll show you. Okay, this is Jack Danger. When you first load the character to stage mode, you're going to find an interesting thing about Jack, and that is he has two heads. And when you first load him, if you're not used to the 2Ds, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So it's really simple. The idea is Jack has two heads because he has one that is the standard uh, head for facial puppetry, but it's not a full 360 head. Jack can't turn his head completely from left to completely to the right, but we can simulate it using the second head, which is a sprite-based head, where you can cycle through a series of six different head sprites to fake the turn. And with a little bit of uh, clever camera editing and camera cuts, you can get Jack to turn left and right very smoothly. So when you load him to screen, here's an interesting thing to start with. If we zoom in on the character, you'll notice down in the corner down here that, oh, it's not gonna do it for me, it's already, yeah, he's already good. Uh, Jack, here we go, where it's coming up, vectorized at the bottom. That's Cartoon Animator just improving the quality of the character because he's vector-based. So as you zoom in, you've got to give the software a second to update. There it goes again. Yep. Uh, but you'll see that you can zoom in on the character nice and tight. Watch his eyebrow there, and it tightens up, and you get a lot sharper image. So we've got Jack loaded, and... As I said, he has two faces. So what we need to do is to learn what is the difference between them. First of all, if you open your sprite editor, you'll see that you've got the selection of body or face. If you go to the body and scroll down, you'll find we have head turn. This is the sprite based head for Jack. For now, you'll see that it has the six sprites. For now, we'll turn that off by going to either the empty space or changing the opacity to zero. We'll just turn it off. Now Jack's face is still there, but the face that we have there now, if you go across to the face tab, is the face for facial puppetry. This is the face that has all the different parts that have all different sprites for them. So for instance, if you go to the mouth, you've got all different mouth shapes that you can use for perfect lip syncing and expressions and things like that. And this explains why we have uh, the second head. You see, when Jack's mouth is open, unlike a lot of characters uh, that have the mouth which is just stuck on to the face, Jack's mouth is different. It's actually cut out of his face. Um, and if we turn the mouth off altogether, you can see there's Jack's head. Okay, that's his face, but his mouth sits over the top. And by doing that, it allows me to be able to have his mouth open in a way that is um, just, I, for me, it works more like a hand puppet. I think it looks better. So this is the sprite, uh, it's not sprite base. This, this is the facial puppetry head. Okay. So it's not the full 360 head, but if we close off the editor, and we open up the face key editor using the gizmo, the head rotation gizmo, you can still move Jack's head around. What you can't do is to go from left all the way to right. But sometimes you might want to do that. And that is why I included the second head, which I'll show you now. So again, if we open the sprite editor, and now on the face, if we make this face, invisible. 
and basically all we need to do is to go through and turn off all the parts of Jack's face for this face. We'll just turn them all off. You know, there's probably a faster way of doing this. I can't think of one, but there probably is. Uh, we're going to turn all the parts of the face off. Jack has a lot of parts to the face. I'll take you through and I'll show you some of them later on. Okay, so turn the last ones off. Okay, now if we go back into the body menu and we click on the head turn and we click on angle one, you'll see that you have Jack sitting there with his eyes closed, but it's not facial puppetry. You can't move the head, it's just a single sprite. And there are six sprites in this sequence, okay? You got one, two, three, four, five, six. And what you can do is you can scroll, you can swap the heads and then scroll through those six sprites to get him to do a head turn. Then turn that head invisible, bring the other head back and you get a nice head turn. So it's a way of simulating that the head turn, but still being able to have a character that has a mouth that's open that you can see through. So that's how Jack's head works. Okay. Let's load up a fresh version of Jack and I'll take you through some of the different features of Jack and show you what he can do. Because the 2Ds are a fantastic series of characters that have a lot of features. Don't forget, when you first load him up to screen, always turn one of the heads off because otherwise you're going to confuse the heck out of yourself. Okay, one of the things that you can do with Jack is to actually turn off different parts of his body. So at the moment, Jack has the gun holsters and the, the wristband and he looks like an adventurer. But you might want to use Jack just as an everyday character. And you can do that by taking off some of his parts. If you go into the sprite editor and select the different body parts, you can turn them off. If you turn them all off, then Jack's just going to look like an ordinary guy wearing a jumper and pants. Don't forget also with the holster that you have the empty holster and then you have the option of the sprite with the gun in the holster because Jack comes with guns. Pretty cool. So yeah, you can turn off all these little features and that way, even with the forearm sprite, you can just select the forearm sprite that doesn't have the brace and therefore now you've got a character that just is an everyday character. So that extends the lifespan and possibilities of use for Jack. I think that's a great thing. Also, with the armband, we were talking about being able to flip Jack from left to right. You'll see that Jack wears the wristband on this arm. But if we were to flip the character, suddenly it's on the wrong arm. Not a problem. Just select that arm and turn it off. Select the other forearm, turn it on. Now he's got it on the right hand. Fantastic. And also, speaking of other sprites that are in the character. One of the other things, I include three different foot sprites in the left foot. And the reason for that is because look, when you look at Jack at the moment and he's just standing there, right? He looks fine, but his balance is slightly off. That's not, the, the way he's standing, it's just not quite right having his feet pointing straight out like that. So what I do with all of my characters now is I include three different foot sprites for Jack because that way when he's standing still if you swap over to the forward facing foot sprite it just gives him a lot more realistic balance and then I also throw in the other one so that if Jack's diving through the air you can have his feet at all different angles so that covers the different sprites now um, I've got a list here of the things that I want to discuss so that's what I'm looking at uh, now color management okay Another thing you can do with Jack is to change all of his colors. Cartoon Animator 5 now has color management and I have that built into all of my Cartoon Animator 5 characters. With color, with color management, if you go across to the SVG color adjustment, you can select from all different parts of Jack's body and clothing. And then you can change everything from their opacity, brightness, contrast, hue and saturation for each of those individual parts. So for instance, let's take Jack's skin. 
If we click on the skin, the skin will blink to highlight that's what we've selected. Okay? And say, for instance, we want to change Jack's skin and make it a little bit darker. You can do that nice and easy now with your sliders. So whatever ethnicity you want Jack to be, you can do it. Then, same thing with the hair. The hair's broken up into mane and brows. So you can select hair and that will change them both at once. Or you can select them individually and change. So if we just want to change his hair color, you can change the hue of the hair color and not the eyebrows. So you can do it individually. Now you can do this with the eyes, the hair, whatever you want. You can also do it with all the different parts of his clothing. So if you want his trousers to be a different color, same thing. Just change the hue of the pants, make them whatever color you want. Um, the flexibility and the customization here in Cartoon Animator 5 with color management is fantastic. Uh, I am totally in love with it. Now, let's leave Jack with the blue hair. I kind of dig it. Spring bones is another thing that I have included in my characters now. So that when you grab Jack and move him around, you will see that his hair bobs around with him. Spring bones are the most amazing addition to the Cartoon Animator 5 upgrade that we've had in years. And the reason for that is because once you apply the spring bones to any prop, any character part, whatever you want, you get this lovely flowing motion that you don't have to keyframe. See, in previous versions of Cartoon Animator, if I wanted Jack's hair to move around like that as Jack walks, well, then I had to keyframe it. I had to go in and animate it. It could be done, but it was tedious. Now, with spring bones, that's just automatically done for you. As Jack moves, his hair will bounce around. And you can control the gravity, the speed, the bounciness of that in your settings to have total control. You have total control over your characters now, and that is just fantastic. Let's go on to Jack's face parts and facial details. If we go into the face key editor and we zoom in on Jack, get rid of the head gizmo because we don't need that at the moment. Okay. You can use the morph template transform and deform tracks of the face key editor to have total control over the face. I mean, it's, it, it's actually amazing how much control you can get over the faces now. One of my favorites is in the detail settings of the, the template track. That will bring up all the face key detail settings for the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. If we start with the eyes, okay, grab one of the sliders, move it, and you can control Jack's eyes moving in a nice, smooth way. It used to be that when we wanted characters to blink, change eye expression, look around, whatever, that you basically just swap from one sprite to another. And you could do it smoothly, provided you had enough sprites. But with the face key detail settings, you have total control like a puppet and everything is lovely and smooth. So if you want Jack's eyes to go wide because something just happened that surprised him, you can do that. If you want Jack's eyes to start squinting, or not squinting, if you want to raise his cheeks up because he's just sucked on a lemon, presumably. Um, you can do that. And once you combine that with being able to move, move Jack's eyes around using the morph, you can get the smoothest eye motion you're ever going to find. And I don't know if you know how to move Jack's eyes if you're a newcomer, but here's what you do. If you bring up the face key editor and simply select on a face part, in this area around the head, you can just move your mouse around and the eyes will move with you. Or you can just do them one at a time. You can do whatever you want and have complete control over all of Jack's face parts. So that is pretty cool. That's making my eyes water. Look at Jack. Woo, let's bring his eyes back. Okay, so that is how you work with the face detail settings. By the way, if you have any questions, I'm not running the live chat today, okay, so that I just focus on what I'm doing. 
But if you have any questions to this video, this character, any of my content, anything I do, send me a message on my Facebook page in a private message. I'll put the link at the bottom of the video. I will answer every question you have. I'm always here to answer anything, not a problem. You can leave messages at the bottom of this video, but sometimes YouTube messages just, they get lost because I don't get notifications on them all the time. Facebook, I never miss. That's the best way to contact me. All right, let's have a look at how Jack moves. I mean, he looks good, that's great, but how does he move? I will show you. You can drop, actually, let's start from a fresh version of Jack again since we made a few changes to him here. You can drop side facing 2D motions onto Jack Danger and get fantastic results right out of the box almost every time. Don't forget, we've just loaded a new character to screen, so what do we do? We turn one of the heads off. Where's his head? There it is. Turn it off. Okay. All you need to do is, where's my emotions? To, to get Jack to move, you can, you, you can keyframe Jack if you want to, that's fine. He'll keyframe beautifully. But if you want to save time, Cartoon Animator provides you with all pre-made professional motions and that gets your characters moving faster than ever and takes half of the hard work out of it all. It's fantastic. So if we go, I've got all my motions here in one place. So if we go down to my favorite pack, which is the Cartoon Moves pack. I just love this pack. Okay, so you've got all your different motions. All you've got to do is grab a motion, drag, and drop it. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's open the motion track so you can see what actually happens. Here's your motion track at the bottom of the screen. When I grab the start motion, S, for the double bounce, and we put it on Jack, he will start to walk. There is your motion right there. Then if we grab the loop motion, drop it on him, he will continue to walk. You can drop another one on there, or if you want to, you can just extend it by grabbing the end of the motion and dragging it to the right. That will extend the motion. And then at the very end of the motion, if we go to the last frame, we can put the stop or the end motion and Jack will stop. Then play the video back I mean, can you honestly imagine sitting down and trying to keyframe that? That's 110 frames to get Jack to do that, right? I did that in five seconds. Can you imagine what it would take to sit down and get that motion as smooth as that by keyframing it in any other software? It's going to take you forever. And that has to be one of the leading reasons to use Cartoon Animator, in my opinion. A couple of things. I won't go through it all now, but I will in other videos. A couple of things. When you apply motions, you'll notice that Jack's hands automatically face in that direction, okay? You can change that easily. All you need to do is to go to your 2D motion, let's zoom in so we can see. Go to your 2D motion key editor, okay? Select on the hand pose editor, select the left hand, and then pick whatever, uh, select left hand at the bottom, Click whatever gesture you want. Now that's facing outward. We don't want that. Actually, let's turn the bones off so that you can see it better. There we go. Uh, there's, that's, fa yeah, that's facing the wrong direction. So if we click flip hand, it's now going to face the right direction. So you can change all that. Another thing you can do if you want to, because all characters have all different sized feet. Okay, My characters do sometimes tend to have larger feet, except for the ladies. The boys have longer feet. Sometimes what can happen is because of the way the bones are set up, when you apply a motion, sometimes a foot, like there on that foot it's okay, but as you'll find the back foot, as it walks, it dips below ground level there, okay? Now, it depends how fussy you want to be. The easiest way to get around that is to cut the camera, <laughs> Cut the camera so it cuts Jack off at the waist. You can still see that he's walking, but you cut out his feet. You don't have to worry. But if you want a full body shot of Jack and you want to see his feet, don't forget that if you go to click on the actual bone of his foot, go to keyframe options and selected parts. So we're not going to affect the keyframes to the whole body, just the individual part. Then find that foot. There it is. The right foot to T. Track, the T stands for transform. 
okay? Um, because we're going to transform that bone, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the V on the keyboard and that's going to drop a keyframe in there. Scroll forward. See how the, the foot bends like that? If we just bring the foot back a little bit, it'll add a new keyframe in at the bottom there. Now, when Jack walks, his feet will stay at ground level. See? Now, there, obviously, it's bent up like he's just stumped his toe on a wall of concrete. So, let's say, for instance, from there to there, we're happy. So, drop in a keyframe, hit V on the keyboard. But, as he extends his foot, we want his foot to come back to there. Automatically adds a keyframe because we changed the bone. So now, scroll, scrolling through, as we come up, he'll put his foot down, beautiful. Now, you'll see that it's starting to dip below level again. So the same thing, you just go through that process, we're okay there, hit V on the keyboard, we like it. As we move along, just bend the foot back up to where you want it to be. And then eventually, you'll get a perfect walk cycle. Here's the thing with motions. A lot of people, when they work with motions, think, right, I grab a motion, I drop it onto a character, it's finished. No. The motion is stage one. It's the, the, the basic, it's the lump of clay that you start molding your character with, where you start actually getting in there then and keyframing all the little bits and pieces. It does 90% of the work, but you've still got to go in and just move little pieces around if you want to get really good animation. So that is how you apply motions to Jack. Ah, another thing that I want to show you. One more thing and then I'll just show you a quick video of Jack. Um, we'll bring in one more Jack because Jack comes with props. And if you've been working with Cartoon Animator for a long time, you'll know how to apply the props. But if you're a newcomer to Cartoon Animator or you've never worked with one of my characters before, then you don't know how to work with props, that's okay. I'm gonna show you. Jack comes with several different props, including handguns and a uh, catapult. Where are they? If you go up to the props tab, props, goodies, Jack Danger, these are all of Jack's props. He's got guns, he's got the slingshot catapult, and the catapult actually comes with eight sprites so that you can animate him pulling it back and firing it by putting it in his hand. Fantastic. Uh, you can get some great results, really, really good results from that. But for now, and if you want to know how to use the catapult, if you're not sure, send me a message, I'll show you. But for now, I'll show you how to add a gun to Jack's hand. So first thing we want to do is to drag and drop the gun into stage mode, and the darn thing is huge. So what we want to do is reduce the size of it, and I'm going to guess, let's take it down to start with, probably about 35 should do it. Yep, perfect. So we want this gun to fit in this hand, because you can't simply take a gun prop and lay it over the top of a bone hand, because it's two layers. The bone hand looks like that, and then the gun sits like that, and that's not how you hold the gun. You need the fingers wrapped around the gun. You can't do that by just adding two props together. So, you, so what I do is I create my own sprites of characters holding objects. Then all you've got to do is swap it onto the character when you want to use it. Easy. So what I do is we want to link the gun to Jack's wrist. So if we select the gun, we go up to the link option in the menu, click link, and then move around over Jack. And as we move around, little blue boxes appear of different parts of Jack and that will ask, what do you want to link it to? And we want to link it to that hand. So click it. That gun is now linked to that hand. And I'll show you. If we were to move Jack's hand now, that gun will move with Jack's hand. But that's not where we want it. So we're going to take over to the sprite editor. We're going to select Jack's right hand and make it invisible. Then, select the gun, rotate it to whatever position you want, make sure that the little dot lines up with his wrist, and now Jack is holding the gun. So now, when we go to the 2D motion editor and we grab Jack's wrist, 
the gun moves with Jack. The thing to keep an eye out on here is layering, and here's why. If Jack's got the gun, but he moves it over here, it moves in front of his face. We don't really want it moving in front of his face because it's in the arm that's behind his body, right? So, all you need to do is find out that Jack has a z-axis value of point, uh, minus 0.9, and the gun is at zero. Therefore, the gun is sitting in front of Jack. If we reduce the z-axis for the gun, it will push the gun behind Jack. So now, when we move Jack's wrist with the gun, the gun hopefully will move behind Jack's head and he can blow his other ear off. That's it. That's as simple as that. And if you work with Jack long enough, if you, if you follow what I've put here, if you, if you learn how to use Jack properly, let me just show you a quick video that I made that demonstrates how good you can animate Jack Danger. So that's what you can do. That's the style of animation that you can get from Cartoon Animator when you work with characters like Jack Danger. Now, as I said, if you have any questions about using Jack, anything I've covered in this video, anything of my contents, any questions you have for me, I am always available. Send me a message, a private message to my Facebook page, and I will answer all the questions you have. I hope you really enjoy Jack Danger. Um, thank you very much for your support and I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.